If you make your child think that Jesus is white, it becomes easy to accept white supremacy and white domination because if God is white, then maybe all white people are a little bit divine. And so before your child even sets foot in a school, you have already conditioned them by example to believe white people are superior to black people. If Jesus is greater than anyone who have ever walked the earth and Jesus is white, that means white people are also, by contraindication, greater than anybody else who walks the earth. I was doing some research on Barbados, and I learned that you guys have over a thousand churches. How in the hell does a country with a population of 281,000 people have a thousand churches? That's one church for every 281 people. Now, I'm not against religion. If you Christian, so be it. The most honorable Marcus Garvey was a Christian. If you Muslim, so be it. El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X was a Muslim. I don't care what religion you belong to. Hebrew, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist. I myself, I'm an African traditionalist. But whatever you into, that's all right with me. As long as your religion doesn't force you to turn your back against the African people. Is your religion an asset or an enemy to the African community. For many of us, we are taught in church that if somebody hasn't accepted Jesus, we should not keep company with them. You have to be careful with that because although I respect your right to worship the black Christ, and it better be the black one, Because I heard some of you Negroes in Barbados have a picture of white Jesus on your wall right now. Raise your hand if you still suffer from post-traumatic slavery disease. If you got a picture of a white Jesus in your house, go ahead and be honest and just wave your hand, brothers and sisters. If you still got a white Jesus at home, I'm giving you a homework assignment. See, as a psychotherapist, we give our clients homework assignments to help improve their ability to manage their mental illness. And we're going to come to mental illness in Barbados in a minute because we have three young Barbadian African brothers and sisters who committed over the past week. Three in one week, four, as someone just said, in one week. We got to talk about and depression. Now, getting back to my point about the white Christ. The reason you cannot have a white Jesus in your house, let me take that back. The reason you should not have pictures of any white people in your house, see, it got real quiet, because y'all love white folks in Barbados. Y'all love them, mother. Y'all love them. You love them. See, when I said get rid of white Jesus, they said, all right, we with you. When I said no pictures of Caucasian, they said, well, wait a minute. What about my picture of George Washington? Listen, and the Queen of England. Raise your hand if you cried when the Queen died. Be honest, you self-hating. Raise your hand if you cried for that Caucasian Queen. This woman has overseen the neocolonialism of damn near 75% of the planet Earth, and you crying for her. I heard some of y'all was celebrating King Charles's coronation. Oh, crusty, you celebrate. Listen, the reason, the reason. You cannot have a white picture of your deity in your home. 
No African on earth can afford to have a white picture of a deity. Why? Because if you're raising black babies and your sons or daughter are growing up in a house where mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa see the image of God in the image of their enslavers, you are automatically conditioning the subconscious mind of your black babies to worship not only that photo of Jesus, but all white people. Let me give you a psychological rule. Your brain stores all information as images. And your brain generalizes information to all situations and circumstances. I'll give you an example. If a black woman in Barbados has a bad relationship with one black man, if he traumatized her, God forbid, abused her, God forbid, abandoned her with child, God forbid, she might start assuming every black man is the same way. Because your brain generalizes information and circumstances. If a brother goes out here today, God forbid, and he gets into a car accident, God forbid, the next time he gets in a car, he's going to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder where every time a car comes up close to him, he thinks he's going to get hit because his brain generalized one tragedy into everything possibly becoming a tragedy. So when your child sees a white Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes, when your child sees the pastor or the preacher at church worshiping in front of or behind the image of a Caucasian Christ, your child's mind will start saying, well, maybe that's why white people in Barbados are only 3%, but they own 90% of the wealth. Even though Barbados is 94% African, the 10 richest people in Barbados have more wealth than everybody else on the island. If you make your child think that Jesus is white, it becomes easy to accept white supremacy and white domination because if God is white, then maybe all white people are a little bit divine. And so before your child even sets foot in a school, you have already conditioned them by example to believe white people are superior to black people. If Jesus is superior to all human beings, if Jesus is greater than anyone who have ever walked the earth and Jesus is white, that means white people are also, by contraindication, greater than anybody else who walks the earth. So if you have a white Jesus at house, come on in, family, we got chairs. If you have a white Jesus in your home, Dr. Umar is giving you a psychological homework responsibility. You're going to go home tonight, brothers and sisters. You're going to get that off the wall. You're going to tear him out of your Bible. That's right, grandmother. Tear his ass out because Jesus was not a Caucasian. You're going to tear him out and you're not going to put him in the trash. You're not going to put the painting in the trash. You're not going to put the poster of Jesus in the trash. You're not going to put the statue of Jesus in the trash. You're not going to put the image that you ripped out of the Bible of Jesus in the trash. You're going to burn them. You're going to burn them. You know why you're going to burn them? Because if you put that picture in the trash... Another one of these Barbadian Negroes will take that picture out the trash. They will take the picture out the trash, take it home, and put it up on their wall. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking the images of white supremacy that are masquerading in your religion as divine images. 
When did Leonardo da Vinci paint the Last Supper? Leonardo da Vinci painted Jesus and the 12 disciples in 1492. We get the Elmina Slave Dungeon, excuse me, he painted it in 1482. Columbus discovers the so-called New World and the Caribbean Islands in 1492. So the number one weapon of white supremacy was not the gun. It was not the bullet. It was not the bomb or the hand grenade. The number one weapon in the enslavement and continued psychological domination of African people from Barbados to Botswana is the image of a white savior. Because you have been conditioned to see white people as your saviors. You can't even tell when the savior is a damn enemy to the community. I'm not demonizing all white people. I would not do that. But I need you to understand that there has never been a group in human history not black people, not brown people, not red people, not yellow people, not white people. Never has there been an oppressor who has worked with the oppressed to eliminate the power they exercise over them. If black Barbados are ever going to end your economic slavery to the Caucasian, let me explain something. Your physical enslavement to the white elite of Barbados, that ended on August the 1st, 1834. But that was only the physical enslavement to the European. Since August the 1st of 1834, until July the 8th of 2023, you have been under economic and political incarceration to the white minority of Barbados. I read an article today that said there's a new policy in Barbados that if you are a foreign national from another continent, another country, if you come to Barbados and spend at least two million U.S., you can get residency status. So Barbados is a hangout for rich white folks. And I'm trying to understand that if Barbados is a hangout for rich white folks, why is it none of this rich white money trickling down to the black people at the bottom? 